What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to season 3 of the Road to Glory career mode with Ferenc Varos and this will be a season where we are involved in the Champions League from the group stages so we are loaning out a player, David Balog, who is one of the most promising players coming out of the youth academy he has 90 to 94 potential but he's 67 rated so I thought let's loan him out for one year and give him uh, just uh, enough playing time uh, in France so he can grow and develop and by the way if you enjoy this series make sure to leave a like Lucas Wilson is our homegrown talent 74 rated already but he's just not yet good enough for our first team but he could be good enough at the end of the season to come, to come in and maybe replace one of our older players we are releasing some of our young players who are surplus to requirements and Lucas Wilson is uh, going to give, be given a big new contract because his contract expires at the end of the season and we will try to loan him out for one more year but this guy Lucas Wilson the youth academy homegrown talent will have a huge part to play in this career mode he will become a world-class player in the future because of his incredible 80 to 88 to 94 potential and he can become our star striker in the future but right now he's not really good enough to play uh, for our first team and as you can see we have some young players on loan and I'm extending the contracts of some players at the start of this season and also it's time to move to a new home stadium we use some of the Champions League money to build a new stadium but we wanted to move to a bigger better stadium and this stadium the Waldstadion is what it's called 43,000 people can be seated in this stadium so we decided to use some of the Champions League money to build this stadium and it will be it will have the same uh, really awesome colors but we changed the nets as well and now it's time for a blockbuster signing and that is Dominic Soboslai and he is worth a lot of money 53 million so we bid 67 million plus a 15% sell-on close and we said to Soboslai well we have Champions League football so it's time to go big and it's time to build a team that can challenge potentially for titles and trophies so let's negotiate a contract with Soboslai he wanted around 75 80k weekly wages we have given him 75,000 pounds uh, per week and he accepted this so we have a new superstar at Ferenc Varos Dominic Soboslai welcome to the club what a signing and this is the new the beginning of the new era at Ferenc Varos we qualified for the Champions League and you know how much money you get for uh, playing Champions League football so we used some of that money to build a new stadium and we also used some of that money to bring in Dominic Soboslai as well and we also managed to sign Dardai who is of course uh, of Hungarian origin his dad is a club legend at Hertha Berlin and he's playing for Hertha as his son nowadays uh, he's a center back who can play defensive midfield as well so i think these two new signings really improves the squad and let's go into our first game against west ham united dominic soboslai will make his debut and i think we needed an attacking midfielder who can score a lot of goals because last season apart from the strikers the attacking midfielders didn't really score a lot of goals so let's start our season against West Ham United Tokmak releases Mai who makes a brilliant run he passes it back to Tokmak Soboslai on his debut <laughs> he's up and running the boy from Hungary who comes back into a Hungarian team to hopefully help us win titles and trophies Dominic Soboslai welcome to the club what a start to life in the Premier League he smashes in his first goal 10 minutes into a new season this is how you want to start a season and West Ham had a chance which Gulacsi saved and of course Gulacsi will have once again a big part to play and Uzuni goes through he passes it to Cibic and the left back goes ahead 
and goes forward and he smashes in the second goal and we are off to an absolute flyer against West Ham United. Brilliant first touch and a great finish by Cevic. But West Ham weren't done, they wanted to get back into the game. Gakpo to Martial to Benrama, great tackle, but then Martial goes through, but Gulacci, what a save! So we preserve the 2-0 scoreline and Soboslai releases Laiduni, the defensive midfielder, gets it back to Soboslai, who goes through, but his finesse shot is saved by the goalkeeper. But then Gavrich, who came on as a substitute, gets the ball from a corner, Zakaria sent to Uzuni, but his shot is saved by Fabianski. So this was a really end-to-end -end game. Gulacci has to make a save and we ran out 2-0 winners against West Ham United. It was a pretty even game in terms of chances, so we are delighted to win this game. 2-0, it was really, really important to get off to a winning start. And Soboslai, who has very, very good potential, he will improve even more. In game week two, we play our second team against Leeds United because uh, I wanted to rotate the team and give just enough playing time at the start of the season to everyone. And last season, you know, uh, Boli had a really good season, but this doesn't start well. Boli gets an injury and then Gonzalo Ramos scores the former Benfica striker. What a terrible start to life in the second team for Boli who gets an injury and then straight away we get punished for a little bit of lack of concentration at the back. Leeds United are 1-0 up and Ramos with another chance. This time he hits the post. But Leeds United were on the front foot. They really put us under pressure. Beshe, thankfully, could clear the ball, but Leeds United hitting the bar twice in the opening few minutes, and then Schaefer goes through, and with our first attack, we equalize. Oh, we are lucky that we are back on level terms, because Leeds United could be 3-0 up, but Schaefer, the defensive midfielder, equalizes for us, and then Schaefer gets the ball. Brilliant. And then Zakariasen goes through. Can he finish? No. The keeper makes Makes an incredible save and then Leeds United had a chance which needs to be saved from long range but then the second half Kish his first shot first pass sorry was blocked the Tokmak goes through he passes it to Gavrich Gavrich can he pick out somebody in the middle he steps up and my scores what a lucky lucky game this is Leeds United hit the post uh, sorry hit the bar twice but then Ryan Mai tucks in that brilliant cross and Leeds United are now finding themselves 2-1 down and then look at how we are countering coverage goes through can he pick out the middle somebody in the middle oh no that cross wasn't accurate enough but then my shoots and then Gavri shoots oh my goodness the goalkeeper made a triple save and then Leeds United come forward 88 minute we just need to hold on Nitsuli with a really really big save but then Leeds United come forward again but Tokmak gets the ball brilliant ball roll by Tokmak the mini Ronaldinho and then Zacharias and look how tired he is he ball rolls he get, passes it back to Tokmak what a strike from long range Tokmak buries the chance and seals the three points how on earth did we win this game by two goals it's a lucky lucky result because look at that Leeds United had twice as many shots 4 xg almost we to be fair also had 2.7 xg but we got very very fortunate and our goalkeeper Nitsuli who is still only 72 rated was the man of the match and we are top of the Premier League I know it's very early still Man United and Man City are the other two teams with a 100% record and Arsenal started with two defeats 
Our first big test comes against Everton, uh, although the Leeds United game was a big test as well. Everton uh, finished, I think, in the top uh, six, top seven in the past season. What an effort by Dominic Calvert-Lewin, an overhead bicycle kick, which Gulachi keeps out. You have to see a replay of that. And then Calvert-Lewin again with a big chance, but Gulachi saves that as well. And Luis Alberto finds Calvert-Lewin for the third time. He flops his lines, but it was all Everton in the first half. We didn't have a chance and Leon Bailey scores, but thankfully Luis Alberto deflected the shot and he was offside, so we got away with one here. Everton deserved to take the lead in the first half, but they didn't score uh, at least a goal, which was counting and then we had a chance in the, the first half at the end but the goalkeeper saved it uh, Gordon gets the ball the big talent he lofts it forward and Gbramin the defensive midfielder somehow bubbles his shot over the line Gulachi is somewhat at fault but you can't really fault Gulachi for uh, you know this because he is saving so many of our so many of the opposition's shots and then Soboslai finds my his shot is blocked and then Uzuni's shot is blocked as well and Everton with uh, with Gnabin oh no we are on the wrong side but Uzuni Thankfully, could get the ball out, but then we make a big mistake giving the ball away. But thankfully, Gulachi saves that as well. Soboslai gets the ball, he passes it to Mai. Mai turns, what a shot! And Pickford saves it. So, but we are still. 1-0 down and Everton came through and Darwin Nunez, who is playing for Everton in this career mode, puts the dagger in. It's 2-0 and it's nothing less than what Everton deserve, but it's still always painful to lose, especially at home. And Everton hold out for a 2-0 win, so our good run of wins ended here. Everton humbled us and they deserved to win this game. Darwin Nunez here is an 82 rated striker and yeah Everton were just the better team so they deserved to win this game. So we slipped down to sixth place in the table. A little bit unlucky but there's still a long way to go and we get Another loan offer for one of our youth academy players, Santos, who is a 65 rated, he doesn't have an amazing potential, but let's loan him out for another two years. And here you can see all the transfers that the Premier League clubs made. So David Neres went to Arsenal, Memphis Depay went to AC Milan, and Everton sold and bought a lot of players, they bought in Leon Bailey, Darwin Nunez. We spent 77 and a half million pounds on two players, as you could see. We signed Dardai and Soboslai, and we didn't lose anybody. So we invested the money that we got at the start of this transfer window very effectively, I think. Langley was uh, going to Liverpool, but they sold Harvey Elliott, which is a real shame because I really hope Harvey Elliott stays at Liverpool for a long, long, long time. They also sold Konate, Man City didn't sign anyone, but Man United signed players worth 330 million euros. So Man United got a lot stronger and Tottenham also got stronger. They signed uh, Bukayo Saka, the Arsenal Youth Academy product. Oh, that's an unrealistic transfer. Our next game is as difficult as the previous one. Against Aston Villa away from home, they have Dennings and Oli Watkins and they have a five at the back formation. So we are playing our best possible lineup. And this, we need to bounce back. After getting a defeat in the Premier League, you always want to bounce back. And Dennings straight away tests Gulachi from long range. But finally, at least we started this game a little bit better than in the previous one. So Slai! Oh, Mashuli and Ryan Mai is there to tuck in the rebound. Get in Mai! And he does the Lewandowski goal 
goal celebration. What an effort by Dominic Soboslai. And here you can see that Mai wasn't offside. He beefed the offside trap and tucks in the rebound. What a strike that would have been from Soboslai if that goes in. And then Lonkar finds Soboslai and there are a few people running through and the Tokmak shot is saved by Martinez. But uh, Aston Villa really wanted to put us under pressure and they did straight away Oli Watkins he holds off the defender and then scores into the top corner brilliant strikers play Gulachi had no chance with that but we weren't done yet Lonkar with his with the first time shot and then we turn into the second half Lonkar gets the ball he passes it to Soboslai brilliant fake shot and then he hits the post that's the twice now that Dominic Soboslai hits the post he's desperately unlucky he scored on his Premier League debut but since then Soboslai has been very unlucky in front of goal and that could have been a penalty Tokmak was cleaned out but then Shanshon's shot was saved and brilliant clearance by Vingo so at least we got a point but we created more chances twice as many shots we had as Aston Villa so I was disappointed we didn't win this game but Emi Martinez was uh, brilliant he was the man of the match so we are now in a seventh place in the Premier League. So not the worst start, but not the best. And Chelsea are in the relegation zone, believe it or not. What a dreadful start for them. And now it's time for our Champions League debut. We are paired in a group with Lokomotiv Moscow, Atletico Madrid, I think, and uh, Lyon, I think, are the third team, if I remember correctly, but uh, maybe not. And Lokomotiv Moscow is our first game Game at home and we really wanted to start this with a victory but that is an incredible sequence of events by Lokomotiv and we didn't create an awful lot of chances in this one and Lokomotiv almost scored and oh my goodness Cabraya our backup left back almost scores an own goal. Bolly passes it to Gavrich, but Gavrich steals it off the defender. He goes through, but what a save by the goalkeeper. That was the chance to take the lead in our Champions League opener, Champions League debut. And then Ryan Maia finds Zubkov, who tries to cross it, but the cross is deflected, but it doesn't go in. And then Soboslai turns away from his defender, but then his shot is straight at the goalkeeper. Mai finds Soboslai. Surely our record signing can score on his damn Champions League debut. No! He puts it wide. The defender puts him under pressure. And it's a very disappointing nil-nil draw in our Champions League debut. Ah, uh, that's not how we want it to start. The Champions League, uh, Lokomotiv Moscow, to be fair, actually created more chances. So we are lucky that we are uh, with a point. And Lyon have beaten Atletico Madrid in Madrid. The next few games will be very, very tough because we will play Atletico Madrid and Lyon in this Champions League group. So it's going to be tough to qualify. Our next game is against Leicester City. We are without a win in two games in the Premier League plus the Champions league as well so three games without a victory we absolutely had to get a victory on our board against Leicester but there weren't that many chances as you can see Leicester created the opening and then second half Leicester created another chance and we are still without a highlight in this game and Wooly who is I think a regen striker at Leicester I think he's the Jamie Vardy regen scores an absolute banger into the far corner of the net Frankie Wooly remember the name he is uh, going to be a world-class player he's the Jamie Vardy regen and uh, Leicester take the lead and then Madison makes it 2-0 similar to the Everton game we are losing 2-0 at home and our team is falling apart that's now four games without a victory and it didn't look good to be honest Madison could have scored another one 
And this is the first time in the 70th minute that we have a chance. Gavrich and Santo gets us back into the game. Kasper Schmeichel saves his the sh first shot, but Santo is there to pick up the rebound and score. That's his first goal of the season. Santo, who I think, scored like eight goals last season. He's up and running, but Rodrigo, I mean, how did he end up at Leicester from Real Madrid? And then Leicester make it uh, absolutely 100% certain that they win this game. It was a brilliant save by Gulacci, but Harvey Barnes is shot now. That was uh, impossible to save by Gulacci. And we can see it three goals. And uh, defensively, it has been a problem that we are leaking goals this season. Last season we were, our whole season was built on rock solid defense, but this season it looks like, I mean, look at the trickery by Madison, absolutely incredible. And the 97th minute, the referee, instead of blowing the whistle for full time, he gives a penalty to Leicester and Madison on a hat trick Chips Gulacci, oh come on man, that is now ridiculous. An absolutely incredible chipped penalty into the top corner. Gulacci gets the di direction right, but he still can't keep it out. And we got smashed 4 1. And Leicester had a 7 expected goals how on earth are we this bad suddenly defensively i have no no but we need to improve defensively otherwise we won't make a european football this season if we are not careful and leicester got taught us a footballing lesson in this game and look at the squad that they have look at the attacking players that they have and we are not in the top eight anymore. Man City and Liverpool are leading the Premier League table, but Ferenc Varos, we slipped down into the mid-table area. We are in ninth place at the moment. Not a great start to our Premier League season. And the last game in the episode is our first fixture in the League Cup. So because we are in Europe, we didn't uh, get involved in the first uh, two rounds of the League Cup. We wanted to uh, finally get a win, so Zubkov started and he's up and running for the season. Finally, we are taking the lead in a game we haven't been able to in like four games I think apart from the Aston Villa game so we played most of our second players uh, and Bully finds Gavrich who has incredible pace he goes through and he smashes it home and Fulham a team from the championship is now 2-0 down at our home stadium Gavrich he also needed to score his first goal of the season and then what an absolutely incredible tackle that was a dirty foul so our center back is down injured and the referee doesn't blow the whistle he doesn't stop the play and cabano floats one in and maya scores in first half stoppage time and that was so so annoying because if the referee blows the whistle for the injured player being down then uh, this goal wouldn't have happened we didn't have a center back uh, one of our center backs was down and that's why fulham found it so easy to score and then zubkov goes through in the second half on the left wing uh, he goes into the box unopposed but his shot is saved and we were hanging on at the moment but we still wanted to score another goal to make our qualification to the next round 100% certain so Boslai came on as a substitute and he narrowly misses the target and then Boli finds Soboslai with a brilliant feat and Boli goes through and he scores Bolly is up and running as well for the season. Our backup striker who picked up a small injury the first time he played in the Premier League. He's back and we win the game 3-1. So we go through to the next round of the League Cup and Gavrich was the man of the match with a goal and an assist. But Bolly got the uh, goal and an assist as well. So Arsenal, Aston Villa, Newcastle, Everton are all through in the League Cup, uh, Leeds, uh, Chelsea, uh, Tottenham, Man United, Liverpool. And we get Everton at Goodison Park. 
So that is a time to get revenge on Everton in the League Cup. And I will include one more game in this episode, Chelsea away. This is a huge test after hitting a really bad run of form in the Premier League. And last season, we have only managed to win once against a top six side. And that was, I think, no, it's, it was twice against Man City and against Tottenham. But the Tottenham result was very, very fortunate. But we actually started on the front foot. Soboslai gets the ball, but his effort doesn't trouble Mendy in the end. But Chelsea come with a corner and Pulisic misses a sitter. Oh my goodness, we got very, very lucky there. And then Gallagher's shot is saved by Gulacci. But Chelsea kept piling on the pressure. It's another corner. But Soboslai wins that header. He passes it to Ozuni. And then he gets it back, a really long first touch, and then an over-the-top through ball to Uzuni. Can he keep his composure? Yes! Uzuni buries it, a classic counter-attack, and Uzuni does that breakdancing celebration from a Chelsea corner. We managed to do a perfect counter-attack, and what a hit by Uzuni. That's his first goal of the season and what a time to get it against Chelsea and Longcar loses the ball and he gets uh, injured in the process as well. That's not what we needed and Chelsea were uh, trying to equalize from a corner. Pulisic gets the ball, he somehow skips past everyone and Gulachi has to make an incredible double save. What an eventful first half this is. And Ryan Mai, oh my goodness, he closes down the Chelsea defender. Soboslai gets the ball and his shot is saved by Mendy. Oh my goodness, if that would have been 2 0 Ferenc Varos, that would have been very fortunate, but uh, much needed. And because Chelsea came back in the second half, and this time Christian Pulisic, after missing a sitter, this time he buries it. It's 1 1. Chelsea are right back in this game. A pass across goal and Gulacci just can't react in time it's a really unfortunate goal to concede but that's how the game finished and you know this is a point that we can build on Chelsea had a lot more shots a lot more XG but we managed to hold on to a very credible draw any result away from home at Chelsea which is not a defeat is a good result at this stage for our team we are still not in the top eight when it comes to the Premier League table but at least we got a point against Chelsea and uh, we only won two games at the start of the season since then we have no wins in the Premier League and in the Champions League so we need to improve uh, and the next uh, episode is going to be another banger really looking forward to it thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this have a nice day see you later goodbye